Over my career, I've helped out many taxpayers who've made significant and costly mistakes with regard to their taxes. I'm the Tax Geek, and here are five of the most common of those mistakes. Let's get right into it, shall we? The first mistake is not taking advantage of available tax savings. There are plenty of taxpayers who forego significant tax savings by not taking advantage of legitimate deductions and credits. There are three reasons this can happen. First, taxpayers are often not aware of tax savings that are available to them or are misinformed about them. For example, many taxpayers believe they cannot claim their children as dependents after age 18, when in fact parents can claim their children as late as age 23 if they are full-time students. By claiming their full-time student children, parents can claim the credit for other dependents, head of household status if they qualify, the earned income credit, and education credits that can be as much as $2,500. Next, taxpayers simply think that claiming certain benefits is simply not worth the hassle. A taxpayer who is in a hurry to file to get a refund might not want to take the time to track down a 1098-T form from their child's college to claim an education credit or a statement from a daycare provider to claim a daycare credit, even though it might result in a significantly larger refund. In this case, a couple of days delay in filing a return could result in a substantially higher refund. Finally, many taxpayers don't take advantage of legitimate tax savings because they fear being audited. If you have the proper documentation to back up your deduction or credit, you shouldn't fear being audited. Never refuse to take a legitimate deduction or credit for this reason. The next mistake on my list is ignoring the IRS. Nobody likes to get a letter from the IRS. Even when it's good or neutral news, that familiar window envelope can give you a shiver when it shows up in your mailbox. You just need to deal with it. Ignoring audit or underreported notices, bills and demands will only make the situation worse and not better. Interest and penalties on the unpaid tax will accrue from the date the tax return was due and will continue to pile up until the tax, penalties, and interest are paid in full. If you don't understand the notice, call the IRS or speak with a qualified tax professional in your community. If you used a paid preparer, bring the notice to that person. If they can't or won't assist you with the letter, do not use that preparer again. Can't pay right away? It's easy to arrange for a payment plan online or by phone. The IRS will work with you if you act in good faith with regard to what you owe. Arranging for an installment plan will usually stop any levies. If you truly don't have the resources to pay, the IRS can even put your account into currently not collectible status and not pursue collection unless your financial condition changes. But you have to initiate the conversation. Another mistake is making early retirement plan withdrawals. If you've watched other videos on this channel, you've probably figured out this is a pet peeve of mine. Retirement funds are designed for retirement. They are not designed to be withdrawn for a rainy day. Early retirement withdrawals are a very expensive way to obtain money. You will owe federal and state income tax and an additional 10% penalty tax on most withdrawals. A large enough withdrawal can subject some of that income to a higher marginal tax rate. The additional income from the withdrawal can also increase your adjusted gross income to the point where you may no longer be eligible to claim certain deductions or credits. If you must use your retirement funds to meet an urgent financial need, try to take a loan against your funds if your plan allows. There is no immediate tax consequence, and the interest you pay on the loan goes right back into your retirement account. However, the big caveat to retirement plan loans is that if you leave your company's employment, either voluntarily or involuntarily, the remaining loan balance immediately converts to an early distribution and is now subject to taxation and possible early withdrawal penalties. A huge mistake that people make, especially people with businesses, is inadequate record keeping. For all business expenses, you must have adequate records and the receipts to back them up. These records can be in an electronic format. It's perfectly acceptable to have images of receipts. And records should be kept contemporaneously. 
This means you should keep track of your transactions as you make them. It is a mistake to try to reconstruct an entire year's income and expenses at the end of the year. It then becomes a monstrous task that's easy to put off until the very last minute. Rather than wade through the piles of receipts, many taxpayers instead try to estimate their expenses, trying to lowball them so that if they are audited, they can dig up enough receipts to cover the expenses they claimed. Again, this is a mistake. By underestimating your expenses in this way, you are cheating yourself out of valuable deductions. All a small business person usually needs to track expenses is a smartphone. Take pictures of your receipts so you don't lose them. Use one of the many apps available that can make it easy to track both expenses and mileage. It will save you money in the end. And the final mistake I see taxpayers make is letting themselves be paid as contractors. Most people who are paid this way and receive a 1099 NEC at the end of the year do not realize they are essentially in business for themselves and find that they owe income tax and self-employment tax on their earnings. And since no taxes will be withheld from their payments, are faced with large balances due when they ultimately file their returns. Taxpayers paid as contractors may also not realize they can claim out-of-pocket expenses relating to their work and may not have kept track of these expenses. Being paid as an independent contractor also means up to four additional forms must be filed with your tax return, often increasing the cost of filing the return, whether through an online provider or paid preparer. You might be tempted by someone who offers to pay you without withholding taxes, but don't do it unless you truly intend to be in business for yourself. By taking a job from a company that properly withholds taxes and issues you a W-2 at the end of the year, you are avoiding a huge hassle at tax time and saving money to boot. So there you have it, five costly mistakes that taxpayers make. Of course, this isn't an exhaustive list and I may produce additional videos on this topic in the future. If you've made one of these mistakes or another costly tax mistake, please share it in the comments. Your cautionary tale may help others avoid making that same mistake in the future. If you found this video informative, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more content. Please share this video with anyone who would find it useful. Your questions, comments, and suggestions are always welcome in the comment space below. Thanks for watching, and I'll be back soon with more of your taxes oversimplified.